By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have another game for you from the old school tournament, the Camel Trophy in Arnhem. Now, if you've missed the first episode of this tournament, a game from the Swiss rounds, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now and it will take you to that matchup. As for here and for today, I have a very interesting game for you because we are going to see a three colored goblin deck in action, exactly a three colored goblin deck and it's going to take on, I've called it a pink power deck. So pink referring to the colors white and red and he also plays a little bit of a black splash for the usual suspects I believe, although I'm not 100% sure. I have no deck lists, I have no deck pictures. What I do have is a little bit of knowledge. So before we continue to the games, I'd like to briefly discuss these two decks with you. Now, if you want to go straight to the games, no worries. You can click on the timestamp below. That'll take you straight to game number one. And here we're going to discuss both of these decks. The first deck that I would like to talk about is the Goblin deck. So obviously it packs four Goblin Kings. And the interesting thing about this, like I said in my introduction, is it's three colored. And what this player has done, he has actually splashed green into this brew. And that means that you can expect the best two drop in Goblin land, and that's Scarwood Goblins. It's one red and one green. I myself have a Goblin deck and I've often wondered, shall I splash in green for the Scarwood Goblins? Because what you're missing is a decent two drop in mono red in the goblin section. So some people then play um, the orc, you know, two to orc for two mana, but of course that's not a goblin and so it doesn't gain any benefit from the goblin king. And in this, that makes Scarwood Goblins superior, a superior choice. But of course you do need green mana. Another great thing about splashing green is that you have access to Sylvan Library. And of course, when you're playing these aggro decks, one of your biggest problems is that you run out of steam. And you see that for instance in the Atog build as well, where they've added blue power to kind of get more card draw in the deck. Now here you can use the Sylvan Library. I believe that's what this Goblin player is going to do. Another card that can be quite powerful, of course, is Pendlehaven because you've got a lot of one ones and all of a sudden your 1-1 one, one Goblin Balloon Brigade can become a 2-3 flying creature. Now that's of course very, very powerful when you're playing an aggressive brew. And of course he's playing with, I believe, four chains, four bolts. So I mean, it's it's full aggro style with that green sauce. Another interesting thing here to add is that he's also playing with Plateau. So I believe um, he's playing with this card so he can put in disenchants from his sideboard to deal with Circle of Protection Red. So that's kind of my my instinct, of course, when you're playing this, you also have access to cards like Balance and Sword. So you kind of have that more controlless touch uh, that you can add to your Goblin deck. Now, what I do wonder about is, is he going to play with Blood Moon? Because he now has a lot of special lands in his deck. So is he still going to play on Blood Moon? I am personally a very big fan of the old school Blood Moon Goblin King combo. Um, but so the question is, is he going to do that? So that's something that I'll... Um, are going to pay extra attention to. And of course, I'm very, very interested to see how Scarwood Goblins is going to perform in this brew. So all in all, a very interesting deck and I'm looking forward to see this. So let's take a look at uh, the other deck, at deck number two. Deck number two is also an interesting one. And the reason I've called it Pink Power is because uh, this player is playing with a Sheevan Dragon. I'm not sure how many Sheevans, but at least one. And he's also playing with Sarah Angels and he's playing with Setch Troll. So those are all very powerful creatures. Now, obviously when you're playing with Setch Troll, it does mean that you're also playing with Black. Uh, he is playing with a Mind Twist. He is playing with, I believe, a Demonic Tutor. Well, I believe, obvious, it's pretty obvious when you're playing Black that you play those two cards. But besides that, I don't think that the Black component is all that heavy. Perhaps if you Terrors, in the sideboard, but for example, I don't think he plays with Hippie. Now I can I can be wrong here because I haven't seen a deck picture. I just briefly looked through the games um, and that is kind of the impression that the deck gave me. So if you're actually the player of this deck, let me know in the comments below what your deck is all about. Well, if you want to obviously, but um, it would be nice to know a little bit more about this brew. Uh, he does play with direct damage as well, so fireballs and lightning bolts. So it's going to be interesting here as, as both decks are pretty aggressive, I guess. But this pink deck is definitely a bit more on the mid-range mid train, a bit more on the control train than the goblin deck, which is more a one-dimensional, let's go for a deck. So it's going to be interesting. I do look forward 
to kind of see the Mind Twist fill in this matchup because a Goblin deck usually has an empty hand, so the Mind Twist is not going to be powerful. Um, so th that's going to be interesting to see. On the other hand, you know, a Mind Twist, there are always moments when it's still useful. Of course, the Goblin deck, for example, is playing um, with the Wheel of Fortune. So that's always kind of a nightmare when you're the Goblin player to play a wheel and then your opponent draws into Mind Twist. Um, any, anyhow, enough talk about Mind Twist. It's only one card in a whole deck. I'm really curious uh, to see the powerful pink deck perform. Uh, let's go to the games. Game number one is about to start here. And the Goblin player is sitting on the left and the pink, dark pink player is sitting on the right here. Starting off with a Batlands passing turn here. And there is a Pendlehaven. Will we see? Yes! Oh no! Lightning Bolt! Oh man, that was the perfect two drop. Okay, there we see a Savannah and whoa, look at this. Black Lotus into a Sarah Angel. So this is immediate pro uh, trouble here. And there, interesting, he's playing Stone Rain main board. Maybe he's playing Stone Rain instead of the Blood Moon tactic then. And there we see a strip mine on Pendlehaven taking four here. And this is an extremely unfortunate start, I feel, for the Goblins player. Look at that, another instant bolt over the Goblin King. And even with just one land, oh, he's dropping more. Soul Ring, Savannah. And there's little that the Goblin player can do against the Sarah Angel here. Drawing now for turn. So this could be a very short game here. Paying five and there's a Fireball. That's not too bad. Because that means you don't have to do a two for one. You don't have to play a chain and a bolt on a Sarah, but you can just fix it with your Fireball. Attacking here, trying to make it pump it to three, but there's a disenchant. So we really see the power here of playing with red and playing with black. And look at that, a swords. The goblin player is getting wrecked. But of course he doesn't need a lot of mana, so there's no need to keep those factories alive. He has to play aggressive with them, has to stick to his game plan. And there is a bolt, it seems, to the face. So that means the goblin player is on seven here, taking a damage, playing a wheel of fortune. And it's nice to see that the, the Goblin player also had a wheel in hand. But now, okay, he's passing turn, actually not playing out anything with those two remaining mana. There again is the 2-2 two -two Goblin with the Goblin King. So that's nice. And, ooh, this is very strong that Loa, because he can activate it straight away, I believe. Has 7 in hand, exactly, going to 8 now. And we'll probably are going to see some big bombs here. There is a Setch Troll. Is there a Setch Troll? No. He has a lot of options, of course. Paying six. Are we going to see... No, not a Sheevan Dragon. We're not going to see a Sheevan, unfortunately. But, ooh, interesting here. Oh, no, it's a mountain. He can't play the Giant Grove. It's not possible. So, he, again, he loses his creatures. And I think that's kind of the story of this first game. We can see the Goblin player trying to play out the threats, but the Pink player is just destroying everything, having access to direct... Oh, and it's over. There's a Fireball, having access to so much direct damage, so much removal in combination with that white swords and disenchants. There's just, you know, too much wrecking going on and all those plays have kind of taken out the aggressive sting that the goblin player wants to have with the deck. It's going to be interesting to see what they're going to sideboard in and if the goblin deck will board in some white control cards here, especially some um, swords maybe against the trolls and the seras. So uh, let's have a look. Let's let these players sideboard and we'll get back to them in game number two. Game number two is about to start and... Um, like I said, it's going to be curious to see what the Goblin deck is boarded in. I And it's not starting well. I do see some Swords to Plows here there. So I guess he's going for that route to take care of those bigger creatures. But he's taken a Mulligan. And I think he'll need, I mean, he'll need really, really, really good draw now to take this game. Because the Dark Pink deck looked very strong, having access to... 
direct damage and to those white control elements making the combination red white already very powerful but it looks like the pink player is also has also taken a mulligan here putting one of the cards on the bottom and we see the goblin player starting with a forest and a pendle haven so that's something you don't expect from and if he can play a disenchant no no he cannot play a disenchant so sylvan's online what i wanted to say is it's not something you expect from a goblin deck finding that red mana i think that's very important goblins of the flark they have mountain walk maybe nice to know if you play a dwarf right next to it it's going to be buried it really does not like dwarfs and there is a soul ring so again we see that mana ramp that we saw in game one as well oh this is again a killer here a mind twist and luckily for the goblin player he has a sylvan so maybe he's just gonna draw all three here i wouldn't be surprised and again you do know you're playing against an opponent with direct damage but losing two swords here and a goblin king especially those swords at this point taking one extra card going to 16 playing a factory and a regrowth on the swords attacking here dealing two damage passing turn so you see him choosing to take back a swords so really appreciate appreciating the swords understanding that his opponent now is five mana so he can start putting sarah angels on the board and of course the swords is also great against those set trolls and let's see he's just passing turn so that's not too bad and ooh, this is interesting picking another factory meaning he can attack with the factory pump it up strong enough to kill the factory in a possible block here there's an animation will there be a swords upon animation and there is a bolt he does get so he gains three life loses two and there is a set troll and that's kind of what I wanted to say. It is risky to use that swords on a factory because you know your opponent has really big, tough creatures. On the other hand, it does mean that he loses a land as well and is not is away from that five mana that he needs for a possible uh, for a possible Sarah Angel here. We don't see the block because the set troll cannot regenerate. Now it becomes three three because of the bad lands. Remember, set troll is just a 2-2 if there are no swamps in play, but this is a swamp and a mountain, so that means the set troll is 3-3, and that's an important difference here. But it also means that he has a mountain in play. And remember, Goblins of the Flark has mountain walk. Interesting here, because I do see a Sarah Angel in his hand. He's deciding not to play it. That's an interesting choice. Attacking here. And he wants to block it, but he can't. And, ooh, I like this, a giant grove. Ay, 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 a terror. I think that one came in from the sideboard. And again, we see what we saw earlier is that there's so much destruction in this white, black, uh, red deck. And I, and I must say, I really like the build. It seems very balanced. It seems to have a lot of answers. And there's a soul ring passing turn. And he's on six now. And, and I mean, I think this is played. And maybe he has some swords or some other tricks up his sleeve. Attacking here with both. Having to animate probably the factory. There is a bolt he has to regenerate. Going to two. But because of the regenerate he doesn't deal any damage. So at least that's something when you're surviving. Playing a stone rain taking care of the factory. Oh look at this. Oh man, at least we got to see the uh, Sheevan Dragon. It's a black bordered Sheevan at that. Wow, wow, wow. Really nice. But uh, I think there was just too much aggression in that uh, dark pink build. Very interesting to see. He's showing maybe uh, he's showing all the damage that he drew. I think that uh, Mind Twist was also pretty brutal, even with the Sylvan Library active on the board. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks with another game from the Camel Trophy. If you like to see these, I'll probably be posting another one on Tuesday. So next week, Tuesday. Remember, I have the entire top eight coming up as well. So that's the quarterfinals, semifinals, and the final of this lovely tournament held in Arnhem. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like, sharing a comment, 
share this content on your socials subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet hit that notification bell really helps out a lot and of course you can also become yes yes a patreon of timmy talks i now have 30 patrons i'm super happy with that as a matter of fact i'm going to show them to you let's take a look at the end scroll Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.